I will speak about uh, growth plate fracture, supercandular forearm, uh, tubular fracture, and some use of ultrasound and uh, diagnose and other uses in the fracture. Also, I'll speak some few points about high specific fractures for child abuse. So, just a, a start with some uh, incidental uh, uh, trauma in, in, uh, in, pain, in pediatrics. Around about 20% of uh, I mean, uh, trauma in children will result in fractures. Uh, one third of all kids less than 17, they will, get, they will suffer at least one fracture. Uh, during their uh, childhood. And the most common site for fractures and beads is the distal forearm, which is around 26%, uh, then clavicles, then uh, fingers. So just first uh, uh, review of anatomy and beads, long bone as surfaces, and then the growth plate, the metathesis, which is thin cortex, and common side for fractures, and then the epiphysis, which is the distal bar. So one of the commonest fractures in beads, around 20% of fractures in beads, is the growth plate fractures. And it's a simple injury to the growth plate, which is called Salter Harris fractures. They usually affect the long bone of the fingers, pharynges, and the radius and the tibia fibula. Uh, so there is five type of Salter Harris fractures. Uh, type one is just injury to the growth plate, uh, usually result in widening of the growth plate, and it can be either uh, non displaced or displaced. Uh, simply the treatment is just if it's displaced to uh, close reduction and then apply a cast and follow up with the orthopedic. Second type is injury to the metaphases and the growth plate. It could be displaced again or not displaced. The treatment is close reduction and then uh, immobilization. Type three is injury to the growth plate and the epiphases. And uh, usually those patients, they need to be uh, open reduction and uh, internal fixation. And type 4 is injury to metaphases and epiphases and the growth plate. And usually those who need surgery. And type 5 is crush injury to the growth plate, which results in, uh, like, in the x ray, will be like no space for the growth plate. So usually you need comparison on the, on the contralateral. Uh, uh, limb and this type 5 is very rare and usually diagnosed retrospective after follow up they found the patient is stop growth of the limb so they think about type 5. Type 5 we just apply cast and then follow up in the orthopedic clinic because most likely they need a surgery. So this is uh, just a remind to make the t five types uh, Easy to remember, Salter is just uh, type 1, is just straight row across A from Salter is above and lower for type 3 and through or 2. And uh, type 5 is crush injury to the growth plate. So, some complication for uh, Salter uh, Harris fracture. Small union uh, refracture, especially if it is uh, early remove of the immobilization. It's very common in the forearm because of repeated falls and sinusitis, uh, which is closing early closure of the growth plate, will result in shortening of the limb or deformity, either first deformity or fungus deformity and compartment. So usually, Harris fracture doesn't need really uh, orthopedic consult, 
until there is some indication, which is like open fractures, or type 3 or type 4, uh, other fractures in the mm -hmm. rate, or inability to achieve reduction, adequate reduction. Uh, so, Charles, what fracture is this? Uh, green stick fracture. Uh, well, so what did <laughs> okay? It's a buckle fracture. So, as you see, sometimes you can miss it in the AP. It's not very clear, but it's easy to catch it on the uh, lateral view. It's a simply buckle of the cortex of the bone, which is recommended here. Usually, the mechanism is, is push. Uh, it's falling with all strange hand. And so the things with it is uh, uh, torus fracture, the other name is torus fracture. Also. It is, is uh, by, by definition, it is stable fracture. It's usually non displaced, and usually the treatment uh, just splint for a uh, splint, removable. Uh, usually heal well with no complication. This is one study uh, about, uh, sorry, um, meta-analysis. This is the uh, review for, uh, because usually they, before they used the cast before, so now they compare uh, the cast uh, or rigid immobilization to uh, polar splint or, uh, yeah, and they use air randomized uh, trial and the conclusion is the semi, uh, the semi, the non ready immobilization is more uh, effective, less complication, and cost effective. So, Zona, what is this? Zona. Bilateral factor for us. Okay. Uh, Dana? Okay, this is, is green stick fracture. It's, <laughs> it's one side, as you see, one side of the cortex is intact. And, and the other side is uh, fracture, it's lying. Uh, it's an incomplete fracture, and usually com the common side is radius and amna. Uh, usually it's like a push mechanism, and the treatment is, if it is, then if nothing then displaced is just uh, immobilization with short arm cast. Uh, so the things with it, if it is, it depends on the angulation according to the age. If it's 0 to 5, the acceptable angulation is less than 20. If it's more than 20 the angulation, or 5 to 10, more than 15, or 10 to 50 year old, more than 10, uh, they need uh, close reduction and long arm cast. Uh, because the younger kids, they have more time of remodeling, so that you give them more angulation. Uh, after that, they follow with the orthopedic. And this is called plastic fracture, or bending, or also bowing fractures. It's a type of incomplete fracture. Uh, as you see, there's bending of the radius and, and, and there is no fracture line. This is fracture is, I, I never saw anyone, I don't know, somebody saw the, this bending fracture. Did you see any one of those? Did you see any one of those plastic fractures? Yeah, uh, I have, not many, but I've seen it. Yeah, so it is, the, this fracture is difficult to treat. It needs either consolidation or in general surgery because they need a lot of force to reduce it. If delay, delay, I mean, if, if, if this reduction wasn't done within one week, it would be very difficult to reduce it. Uh, so we'll speak about supracondylar fracture, which is one of the commonest injury around the elbow. And I think everybody saw uh, this fracture. Uh, it's uh, usually the age is five to nine, and usually from posh is the commonest cause. Uh, uh, we speak about the anterior fat 
bad sign and the still bad, bad sign. So there's two types, the extension type and the flexion type. The extension is the common type, it's 95 to 98. Uh, usually it's, out uh, it's falling on outstretched hand, resulting in hyperextension and fracture of the distal numerous. As you see here, and as you see the distal part of humerus is placed posterior. The second type is the flexion type, which is a less common type, is around 2%. Usually result from direct uh, fall on the elbow, and flexion result in anterior displacement of the distal part of the humerus. Uh, this is called, I mean, this is anterior humeral line, which is make uh, diagnosis of supracondylar more easy. Uh, align anterior to anterior uh, surface or border of the humerus, passing the normal is passing through the middle third of the capitula. And this is abnormal, the capitulum is posterior to the line, and this is without an extension type of supracondylar fracture. The other sign for supracondylar on the x ray is fat bad sign. So the fat bad sign, anterior bad fat bad sign, it could be normal, but if it is like seal, seal line, this is most likely it is indication of supracondylar fracture. And posterior fat bad sign, it's always abnormal. I just mentioned about the classification of uh, supracondylar, it's got friend, fat line. Uh, classification. It's important for the treatment. So type one is anterior and posterior border femoris is non displaced intact. And you see the hairline uh, crack. Uh, and this is type two is the anterior is displaced, posterior is intact, and type three is both of them is displaced. And this is just an example for the type one. Type 2, the anterior, uh, anterior, anterior displaced, and type 3, which is anterior and posterior, is displaced. This is just an article about uh, accuracy of diagnosis, what are sound, and elbow fractures. Uh, 2007 February, they study around uh, 21, uh, around uh, 26 patients. Uh, they study around 130 patients by they did an ultrasound and they did x-ray for them to see uh, and to compare the result of accuracy. They found the ultrasound is highly sensitive for uh, <coughs> uh, diagnosis of fractures. They use uh, some criteria. So they use the linear probe, longitudinal, and transverse. And in the longitudinal, you'll see this is the humerus anterior line, uh, sorry, the posterior, and this is the posterior fat bad. This is the normal, and this is, is the abnormal. This is the humerus, and this is fat bad is bulging outside, uh, posterior. And this is on the transverse, this is the median lateral uh, uh, dial, and this is, uh, is normal, and this is, is bulging above the line, it will be abnormal. And this is the same. We just have a uh, uh, transfers. So the middle is a condyle, and this is bulging. This is normal, and this is abnormal. And this is the conclusion of the study that is high sensitive for uh, uh, elbow fractures. And this is another study for supracondylar fracture. They study around 106 uh, children. They compare the uh, posterior fat bad sign and also the clock on the ultrasound that they found is uh, again high sense for fractures. So the ultrasound it's used as a diagnosis. There is uh, more uses for ultrasound we'll speak about later and take in fractures in kids. Uh, so the complication of sovereconderal fracture is uh, injury to a uh, branch from median nerve called anterior interosseous uh, nerve. Nebraxia. This is uh, the commonest by far, like 75 uh, nerve injuries causing uh, anterior interstitial nerve. Uh, the second type is ulnar. 
uh, in urban injury, which is, could be from collection type or uh, posterior lateral fracture pattern uh, from the, for the distal uh, part of femoris. Radial nerve is very rare, but can occur with the uh, posterior uh, median uh, fracture pattern. Also, compartment, uh, deformities, or uh, brachial uh, artery angles. So anterior interosseous uh, nerve injury is uh, it's, it's about it's a nerve, it's a motor branch from the median nerve. It's almost uh, just distal to uh, ulno femoral uh, ligament uh, jo uh, joint, and it supply uh, flexor duodenum rotundus flexor pollicis longus and pronator uh, quadratus. And how to uh, I mean how to diagnose this injury? As the patient to do OK sign, and usually they do like this, which is uh, they can flex the di distal interpharyngeal joint of the thumb and the index. Uh, usually it resolves spontaneous within a few months. Most of the cases, very rare, they need uh, surgical release. Uh, treatment for supracondylar, as we mentioned, type 1 land displaced, or type 2 is very like, uh, limited if there is anterior femoral line is uh, intersect with the anterior, uh, the anterior part of the trabeculum and there is no minimal swelling and no uh, medial uh, involvement. In this case, they can treat conservative <coughs> with uh, close reduction and long arm cast with in position from 90 to uh, 120 degree in natural position, for our natural position, natural position for almost four weeks. Otherwise type two, or I mean the other type of, I, the other cases of type two, type three, or collection, most likely they need an uh, operative treatment. It's just a product review of, of the certification centers and the time of closure of this can help for diagnosing this fracture or this is just a certification. And there is some uh, uh, moment to make it easy to remember, like try to, to remember the edge of classification and uh, capitular, trochlear, external, uh, usually all of them use 12 to 14, and the other uh, row, ROI, is like you add one EF for it. Clear? Uh, for arm fractures, we speak about metalia, which is a dislocation of the proximal radial head and fracture of proximal ana. Usually, in a pair by age 4 to 10 years old, and the mechanism either blow over the back of the arm, the forearm, sorry, and or hyperextension or falling or, on outstretched hand. Uh, this is a classification for mentalities. I mean, it's good to know because it's important for the for the treatment again. Uh, type one is just anterior uh, dislocation of the radial uh, head with anterior angulation of the uh, arm. Type two is just uh, posterior dislocation of radial head with angulation is posterior, which is the uh, and type three is lateral. Type four is anterior dislocation of radial head with fracture of both radius and that. So the complication of metagia is injury to posterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch from radial nerve. And to diagnose, to ask the patient to do thumb sign or gun sign, he will try to do it because the injury is to the radial nerve responsible for the extensor muscle and the bursts and the index. Usually, as I said, they resolve most of the case results from tennis also. And the other complication is delay or management. Management usually, mutagia in, in children is not like adults. Usually, 90% treatment conservative with close reduction and immobilization. Which is then, obviously, the adult usually 
all of them in the Linux safety, most of them. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, one uh, classification one, two, three, they can close reduction. And usually, the reduction is just applied traction, and usually, after reduce the other triggered head, what reduces spontaneous. If you maintain that uh, the reduction was maintained with the cast, they can follow up with the orthopedic. If they fail, they will know the orthopedic How do we uh, you mobilize in one to ten of flexion with full subvenation. Okay? But, but like, like one ten. One ten. With subvenation. So uh, it's a cast. This is a cast. But Usually it's done by orth orthopedic, but that is, if we are where <laughs> working in some area, there is an orthopedic, you can just apply the steel slab in this angle and follow up with that. I mean, usually, orthopedic, they are, I mean, the other emergency physician don't apply cast because the risk of compartment, and I don't know about the expert, but I think you can apply a serious lab and fix it and follow up with the orthopedic. No need to, if you get good reduction, I mean, you can put it and follow up with the But usually, we call orthopedic. Over reduction for the case is if addressing or uh, you fail to achieve reduction or over reduction. Or a bit fracture. Uh, Giliazi is other forearm fracture. There is a, fra a dislocation of the radio and uh, joint and distal radial fracture. And usually it's common in uh, age 9 to 13 year old. And the mechanism usually from axial uh, load where in, in the arm in the uh, rotation and extremity of forearm rotation. Complication of biliasi, malunion, nonunion, or instability of distal radio or not uh, joint can result also in superficial uh, radial nerve uh, well say, which is a branch from radial nerve responsible for the sensory part of the posterior part of the hand on the radial side. Uh, this is a video. <coughs> I hope I can. Uh, yes, it's about the use of ultrasound in this radial. Welcome to the HCMC training video for the use of ultrasound guidance during the reduction of closed distal radius fractures. 
There's never been a simple way for emergency medicine physician. So that is uh, the use for ultrasound is to, recur, uh, to localize the fracture or to also use in the camera block or to clarify the detection. And this is the fracture line on the ultrasound, another ultrasound fracture line, and this also can, can use for skull fractures, rib fracture, sternal fracture. So, this back to Giliazi. Treatment is as the same as with this, yes, usually in kids. We can treat uh, by close reduction and immobilization. And the immobilization is, the, uh, is to in, in about uh, block arm uh, cast. Uh, <coughs> so this is total fracture. It's uh, very common in uh, kids one to three year old. Uh, usually it's a spire fracture on the shaft of lower part of the shaft of the uh, tibia. The kids, they start to walk, they fall, and they get uh, this structure. It's kind of here, up to six years. The old uh, thought this could be barred from abuse, but the study shows not really, uh, you are not, I mean, this structure is not really an indication of abuse. Uh, Usually occur from fall, external rotation of the foot with uh, knee inflection. Early x-ray could be normal. So if you have a high sex machine, you put the patient in a, a long leg uh, ca walking cast, and you follow up with orthopedic, they did the x-ray sometimes, and they can see the fracture itself. Andy, what do you see? There's a rock here. What is this? Jones or Susan. Jones or Susan Jones. One of them. Okay. What is this? This one. This one. So this is okay. And this what about three? So okay. This is is the normal phase of the the growth blade for basement metal tarsal bone. It's uh, as you see, it's parallel to the uh, axis, uh, the long axis of the basement tarsal bone. You see it here more clear. So this is uh, the faces of the basement tarsal bone. It usually start appear by uh, eight, eight years old. And usually disappear by 12 in females, 15 in, in, in boys. And this is a sodium dose, the pressure at the distal bar, sorry, and the proximal at the base of the pregnant tarsal bone. And it's again here, mark it here. What about this area? This is, is Jones. So, Sudi Jones is here, and this is Jones. So, and this is his stress fracture. The important is to between both of them because the treatment. Treatment for Sudi Jones, for Sudi Jones, is just walking uh, uh, shoes or walking cast with uh, as been tolerated. While Jones fracture, if they need and non weight bearing cast because there is high risk of uh, of non uh, union. Uh, Jones is, is a meter basis, <coughs> while uh, Sudo Jones is proximal up here. <coughs> so, uh, last thing I will talk about in 2014. Uh, child protective services, uh, but an article about some fractures highly specific for uh, child abuse, non-accidental uh, trauma, and those 
uh, it, it's good to know it so you can suspect uh, child abuse. Uh, this includes humoral shaft fracture in children less than 18 months, uh, especially with the spiral of knee fractures, 3S uh, fractures, sternum, scapula, and spin, uh, Spanish process, vertebral, and uh, 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 coronal uh, metaphysical regions. Uh, this is the what is this fracture? Corner fracture. And what is this mod? This is, is bucket band handle. It's a yeah, it's a because of the traction over the end of the metal interfaces result in traction of the distal part of the uh, interfaces, which is uh, in this data one year usually. It's a sign of, <coughs> of child abuse. And posterior and lateral ribs fractures. And femur fracture is not one year because they are not walking. So. <coughs> in summary, fractures common in kids, growth rate is common, and if they say it's normal, and the stereotype there is, you can have suspicion for the patient in class and for an orthopedic and you consider a star comparison one uh, look for uh, nerve injuries and do full examination including OK sign, gun uh, sign and uh, scissoring of the fingers examine all the nerves involved and the injuries of the upper extremity uh, other sound injuries, for tool, standing face and can help in diagnosis, reduction, and uh, hematoma block. And if you have any those fractures or high suspicion for child abuse, think about it. And consult uh, orthopedic when it's needed. Uh, question? Comments? Concern? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.